Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second video in an ongoing series where I test, at least to the best of my capability scientifically, multiple different types of suppressors that are currently available in the marketplace to give you an idea as the consumer as to what you can expect when you buy one of these suppressors. In the first video, we dealt with 556 cans and we tested them on a Midwest Industries AR-15. In this video, we're going to do 30 caliber suppressors. Towards the end of the video, we will also include some of those 30 caliber suppressors that we fire on a Savage Model 10 308 bolt action rifle with an 18 inch barrel. We'll include some of those on the rifle, the 5.56 rifle that we tested the 5.56 cans on in the first video in the series. The reason we'll be doing that is because I get a lot of questions at the shop here at Copper Custom by people that want to save some money by buying just one suppressor. They want to buy a 30 caliber suppressor to use on their 308, but they also want to be able to use it on their AR-15, for example. And they ask me, how much suppression can I get if I take the 30 caliber can and put it on a 5.56 gun? And if you stick around towards the end of this video, you'll know the answer to that question. I also highly recommend that you watch the first video in this series before watching this video or any subsequent videos in the series, because there we talk about how we're doing the testing and why we're doing the testing. Now in this video, I will also here in a few minutes show you the basic testing protocols and then we'll get straight into the actual testing itself. Now I had a couple of questions arise in the first video that I want to address in the intro to this video before we get into the testing. First of all, some of you guys brought up the averaging. Some of you guys pointed out that you can't technically get solid averages or you can't really average decibels. And I understand that, but you have to keep in mind that that practice is an industry standard and I will continue to do it throughout the, the, the duration of this video series. Now I realize that just because the industry does it that way doesn't necessarily make it right, but it is an industry standard. If you watch any other testing videos that are out there that are produced by companies such as Silencer Co., you'll see that they're doing the exact same thing. They're averaging those decibel readings. I do make the decibel meter plainly visible throughout the entire uh, video series, so you can make your own determinations, not only about how I read the meter, but you can also do your own averaging if you would like. So it's totally up to you how you take the data, but I'm presenting you with the raw data and of course a little bit of my own opinion. I also want to talk about first round pop. Some of you guys in the first video were saying or asking the question, why did some of the suppressors sound louder on the first shot than in subsequent shots? That's because of a phenomenon known as first round pop. Basically, you have oxygen from the atmosphere that's in the suppressor. When you fire that first round, those propellant gases interact or combust with that oxygen that's in the suppressor that makes for a first shot that's a little bit louder than the shots that would come after. The, sub the subsequent shots aren't as loud because the oxygen has re been replaced by propellant gases. Also, you guys had brought up the subject of firing suppressors wet and asked if I would fire the suppressors wet in this video. The answer to that question is no, I won't be firing any of the suppressors in this video series wet. Some of you may not know what that means. Basically firing a suppressor wet means you've put some sort of abative material in the suppressor such as water or grease to try to mitigate that first round pop that I was just talking about. Does it work? Yes, it does. However, some suppressor manufacturers will say that you will void your warranty if you put any type of material into your suppressor, such as water or grease or things like that. Also, keep in mind that water can be corrosive, and many of these suppressors are sealed at the factory, especially centerfire rifle cans. You can't get into many of them, and when you put water in them, keep in mind water is corrosive, and you can cause damage to your suppressor over time if you continue that practice. So, in general, I don't recommend it, and I won't be doing it in this video series. I also want to take a minute to thank Silencer Shop for helping to make this video series possible. Now let's get started with doing some testing after we take a look at the basic testing protocols. Ready? No. Go. Ready? Go. Ready? Go. Go. That's it.
Alright, ready? Ready. Go. 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 Sit. Go. Okay, ready? Ready. Ready? Go. 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 Sit. Okay, ready? Ready. Go. 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 All right, ready? Ready. Hold on. All right, go. Go. Go, hold on. Gun's jamming up. Go. All right, that's it. Ready? Ready. Go. 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 Sit. Go. Go. Sit. Now we'll take some of the 30 caliber suppressors that we just tested on the Savage Model 10 and we'll put them on a 5.56 AR-15, the Midwest Industries rifle, again, that you saw in the first video series where we tested the 5.56 cans. We're only able to test a handful of these 30 caliber suppressors because we didn't have attachment devices for all of the suppressors that you've seen in this video. Let's see how the 30 caliber cans perform on the 5.56 rifle. Ready. Ready. Go. 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 Ready. Ready. Go. 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 Ready? Ready. Hold. Go. 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 Ready? 
Ready. Go. 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 I hope you guys found the information in this video to be useful. If you're a first time suppressor buyer, hopefully this information will empower you with knowledge so when you go forth into the consumer market and buy a suppressor, you do so with your eyes open. If you're a seasoned buyer of suppressors, hopefully some of this information is useful to you as well. Some of you guys have said, well, I can buy an iPhone app or buy a decibel meter off Amazon and, and do my own testing. I just want to warn you because I've tried these things. The iPhone apps, the Android apps, and the $100 decibel meters you buy off Amazon.com, the results that you're going to get are completely worthless. Don't waste your time or money buying these applications or devices. The devices that we're using or the device that we're using in this video series is expensive and somewhat hard to come by, which is why we're doing the video series so you guys can see actual scientific, again as best as I can do, scientific testing of various suppressors that are currently on the market. Also let's quickly talk about decibels. OSHA tells us that t exposure to a constant noise of 85 decibels or louder is permanently damage damaging to our hearing. OSHA also tells us that impulse noises such as impacts or gunshots that are suppressed can be 140 decibels or less. Anything over 140 decibels with say a suppressor can be damaging to our hearing. You'll notice that a lot of the suppressors in the tests that we've done with the rifles is right at that 140 decibel threshold. That's why it's wise to wear hearing protection even though you're running a 5.56 or 30 caliber rifle suppressed. Atmospheric conditions, ammunition used, different types of firearms being used can all change the decibels that a suppressor will produce at, on any given day. So a suppressor that tests at 138 decibels today may test at 143 decibels tomorrow someplace else with somebody else's gun or somebody else's ammunition. Three decibels is significant. Don't think that 140 decibels and 143 decibels, there's not much of a difference there. There is a significant difference there, and it's not safe at 143 decibels for your hearing. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash military arms. Also, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. It's our online store and it's the best possible way to support the Military Arms channel. We have a lot of products at really great prices. And I also invite you to swing by and check out full30.com. That's full30.com. It's an online shooting community by us for us and you'll find some of your best content creators over on full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.